Good morning, and welcome to our weekly devotional video from Glendon Lutheran Church. I'm Assisting Minister Kurt, and I have a few quick announcements before we begin. We have formed a team of Glendon Lutheran members who are reviewing the Minnesota industry guidance for safely reopening places of worship. This team will begin meeting this week to make the plan that we will have to follow before we can resume worship in the building. We have received a Resilient Communities grant from the Northwest Minnesota Synod. These funds will help us upgrade our internet and provide equipment to begin a live stream of worship. We will have more news as we figure that out over the next few weeks. Please visit our website, glendonlutheran.org, for updates and to continue downloading our Taking Faith Home handouts. We will be working with Dilworth Lutheran Church to make a home vacation Bible school. Starting June 8th, there will be two videos per week for four weeks, along with some materials you can use at home. If you would like to participate, please let me know. There will be a $10 fee for each set of materials to help defray the cost. Now please join me in saying our Pentecost litany. The Spirit comes on the rush of a mighty wind and brings with it the promise that God is with us and among us here in this place. The Spirit comes and brings with it God's peace that unites us to be the peoples of God. The Spirit descends and brings with it the promise of vision and dreams on both young and old alike, for there is room here for all to live by faith. The Spirit gives breath and brings with it life, for just as God gave breath to life in creation, so the Spirit breathes life into us. And yet there are times when we doubt the Spirit's presence and God's ability to save us, to give us hope, to bring about peace, and to give us life. And yet, Lord, we come. We come because your Spirit calls us to come. So come, Holy Spirit, and fill us anew with your presence and your power. Come today. Come to stay. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now please join me in saying the prayer of the day. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, my name is Julia Warner. I am a member of Glendon Lutheran Church. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them, speaking in the native language of each, amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, 
they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Before I begin this morning, I'd like to offer a word of gratitude and thanks to Curtis, our assisting minister, and to Linda, the office secretary at Glendon Lutheran, as well as the church council at Glendon Lutheran, and all the members and friends who have helped them continue to be the church when we've not been able to gather together. The truth is the church still continues to be about its work. Even though we can't gather together and work, In worship, the work of the church, the work of God's people, that the work that God's Spirit calls us to be about is still at work. And COVID-19 cannot and will not stop that. And so to all of you, members and friends alike, I want to say a word of thanks and gratitude. Thank you. So let's join now in prayer. Gracious God, just as your Spirit called people to faith and witness at Pentecost, so may your Spirit continue to call and gather us as your church today. Now, Lord, use this time and this message to and for your glory alone. In Christ's name we would pray. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today, Pentecost, we celebrate the birthday of the church. Almost 2,000 years ago, the Christian church was born on Pentecost. Pentecost actually derives its name from the ancient Jewish festival that was celebrated 50 days after the Passover. And it also explains why there were so many people in Jerusalem that day from literally around the known world. They had gathered together to celebrate one of the main festivals of the Jewish faith, Pentecost. On that day, they had come for a different reason, for the Jewish festival. But that tradition was about to be transformed into what we call Pentecost today. So how did this day become the birthday of the church? Well, we have to begin with Easter and the resurrection. The events of that first Easter changed everything. Think for a moment of what Jesus' resurrection meant to those who had gathered that first Easter morning, who had witnessed the resurrection. The Jewish people had longed hope for the liberation uh, of, of Israel from the foreign nations who had ruled over them. The liberation that would restore them to the nation they had once been under King David lo, so long ago. As a result of these hopes, Jesus' followers, along with many other Jewish people, were waiting for God to send another Moses, a Messiah, a Savior that would set them free as a nation. This was the hope they had for Jesus. They had hoped he would be the one to restore God's people, a hope that was destroyed for them when Jesus was put to death on the cross. So try to imagine for just a moment the excitement of Jesus' followers on that first Easter when they encountered a living and risen Jesus. It meant not only that Jesus was alive, but that God had fulfilled the promise, that Jesus was the promised Messiah, and that God now would begin the work of restoring his nation, 
God's people. In fact, we hear this hope very clearly in those very first verses of the book of Acts where the disciples ask the risen Jesus, Now, Lord, is this the time that you will bring about the restoration of the kingdom of Israel? It is clear where their thoughts and where their hopes were. It is also clear is that Jesus' message to them and to us is that it is not for us to know that time. But you will receive power, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Now, 50 days later, as his disciples are waiting in that upper room, suddenly there was a rush like the sound of a mighty wind, and tongues as a fire appearing on the disciples' heads, and they began to speak in other languages. And all those gathered in Jerusalem from around the world heard about the great and powerful deeds of God in Christ Jesus in their own language. As a result of that great outpouring, about 3,000 people were baptized that day, and the church was born. Born not by the disciples' power, but by God's, by the power of God's Spirit, a power that allowed the followers of Jesus to simply tell what they knew to be true, the same power that still brings about strength in the church today. On the festival of Pentecost, the promised Holy Spirit gave voice to the followers of Jesus to bear witness to what they heard, what they saw, what they believed. The promised Holy Spirit continues to give voice to the church, to God's people, whenever we declare that God's Son, Jesus, is the Savior who has redeemed us from sin, death, and the power of the devil as God's Spirit continues to call and gather, enlighten, enrich, teach, and send us to tell the story, both in words and deeds, in worship, as well as in service. God's voice rings out whenever it speaks to us, to our hearts and to our lives, and when we share it with one another in our homes, in our relationships, as well as in His church. The disciples said it well, that burned within them. They could feel that in them as they spoke those words to others and they shared what they knew to be true. God's voice rings out whenever we speak it in our hearts and in our lives, when we share it with one another in our homes, in our relationships, as well as in his church. And so I'd ask you this morning, whose voice did God speak through to you? Who spoke through them? Where did God use his voice? Was it a parent, a grandparent, a Sunday school teacher, a Bible teacher, a neighbor, a friend, an evangelist like Peter, or even a trusted friend? Take some time this week to share in your homes and with family and friends and share your stories of faith, what you believe to be true what you trust in your life, and how God has been at work in you so that they can hear that Spirit's voice through you. Let it be spoken out loud. Find ways to encourage one another and to call that faith out in you to others in faith-filled lives. So come, come and hear God's promise that his promised Holy Spirit is among us and that it's calling us to faith over and over again daily, Luther says. It daily rise to believe this one who is with us and for us, even in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of all the other things. This power of the Spirit that came at Pentecost still guides and directs and leads and inspires and encourages us to speak out and to tell, to speak out and to be God's church. Happy birthday to the church. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now join me in saying the prayers for the people of God. O oh Lord, we pray that you send your Holy Spirit to live in us 
Let your spirit bring us healing. Heal the world from the COVID-19 pandemic and be with all those who it has afflicted. Guide our team of members as they craft a plan to safely worship in our building again. Remind us that our worship is not dependent on gathering in person, but on loving and caring for our vulnerable neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal our hearts from the racism and bias that dwell in our culture, our institutions, and our thoughts. Send your Holy Spirit to those who are called to work in law enforcement. May your Spirit guide them to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, and plead for the widow. Protect them as they carry out their duties from all those who would do them harm. Bring your healing and comfort to the family of George Floyd and all who have been impacted by the violence in Minneapolis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to be with all who celebrate major milestones in their lives during this pandemic. Especially be with all the graduates of DGF High School as they celebrate today with a parade. Be with all those who have delayed celebrations, weddings, and other gatherings, and keep them strong and safe. Protect us from loneliness and depression, and give comfort and strength to all those whose addiction or mental health issues are exacerbated by social distancing and isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now join me in praying the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.